So welcome back to Dirty Barry. What you just witnessed was the first successful test of the PCB depanalyzer. So this was a fun little project. I'm currently just showing you all of the stock that was used in it. So it was primarily made from laser cut steel in various dimensions or various thicknesses. So I've done all of the finished machining and there were a few modifications to the design along the way and trying to determine the best way to make bushings and he had some difficulties of lining stuff up, but it's all part of the fun. Um, so I've definitely learned of a few improvements that I'd like to make next time. So I've used silver steel for making the shafts, and the cam shaft is actually going to be made from aluminium instead of a piece of steel shown here, just because the steel was too small. We were making a whole load of knife punches, so we're making those out of silver steel and hardening them. And the catcher tray is just made out of some stainless steel. So we'll get to work. We'll start by cleaning up the side plates using a face mill. So we're just taking the outside edges off and this gives us nice parallels and flat surfaces to work with. Once we've squared it up, we can find the center of the work and begin working on all of our features. So start off by drilling and counterboring all of the appropriate holes and we move on to boring for the bearing fit so this is a 32 millimeter outside diameter bearing and seven millimeters deep pocket now once we've finished boring the hole and the bearing fits we can come along with our face mill again and skim off the front and back of the part and then we've got to do this a second time and then we have our two side plates finished and ready to go Next items to work on are the lower side plates. I've already faced them off off camera. So now we're just centering it up and then we have to drill some holes on the top and the front. And we also need to mill a shallow pocket for a slider tray. So this is a nice simple part. Doesn't take too long to work on. Once they've been machined and faced off on the sides, we will take it to the angle grinder with a polishing wheel and we'll just buff off any of the dross or whatever it's called from the laser cutting. The beauty of these carbide face mills is that the inserts are practically vertical over a short distance. So if you're only taking one to two millimeter deep cuts, you can get a very nice square edge, or at least square enough for this application. For facing the stock off at the end, I'm um, basically just taking the bare minimum to get rid of the uh, mill scale. So it's about 0.1mm. So we'll do one side of each and then flip them over and do the other side. And then they're effectively ready to go. So now that we've got the side plates complete, it's time to get into the meat of the project. So this here is the lower plate, which has all of the cavities for the circuit boards to fall through after they're cut out. So this is a simple looking part, but it actually does require more accuracy than I initially anticipated. So it's got bolt locations for bolting down to the side plates, which is fine. But then it's also got holes used for the alignment pins to align with the top plate that presses down on it. So these really need to be more accurate than I initially expected. So they aren't perfect. I should have come along and machined them as one batch doing the top and the lower plate clamped together. But we live and we learn. Anyway, another thing that I noticed when I was doing this plate is that the plate isn't actually flat, it's warped in the middle. So when I came along to face it off with the face mill, there was an untouched patch. So I pulled everything out of the vise and checked for any burrs or Swarf or chips anywhere, couldn't find anything, so I just had to put it back in and had to take a slightly deeper cut. So the plate did end up coming a bit thinner, but that's not a problem. So before we continue with the project, I'll quickly just interrupt it with a quick scene from the SMT line we use to manufacture the PCBs. So this SMT line is quite old, we're replacing it at the moment, but it does have quite a few good features. We've got a laser marker, we've got a stencil printer, and then we've got automatic solder inspection, 
and then goes through to the free place machines, comes out, goes into the convection oven, and then after the oven it gets inspected by an optical inspection machine and gets racked. So now I've got to make the cutter top plate. So I'm going to have to spot out and drill all of these holes. So I've got the drilling coordinates in a table on the left. So I'll do the whole lot spotted and then I will go through the whole lot with the three point three drill bit and then I will come in with the five millimeter end mill to counter bore these uh, or counter drill for these M6 threads. So we'll get to work. This top plate was a lot of repetitive work because for each hole I had to first spot it and drill it and then tap it so I had to go through oh, I believe it was 18 holes or so or 20 holes over and over and over again um, this actually did result in me mispositioning the head once or twice and so I did have to fill in one of the holes with weld and retry it because it wasn't exactly in the right place because I didn't see the negative sign on the DRO but that's enough part of life you have to be careful um, I definitely would change this in a future design where instead of having a whole lot of cutter knives I would just have a few simple tapped holes and I'll put some 3D printed blocks under it and just replace them every couple of months if they wear out while it's cutting out the boards but anyway we'll continue these holes being bored for bushings, this is where I really went wrong with this project. I went too hard and too fast with a boring bar and actually managed to make a pretty poor surface finish in the hole. But that's not the biggest problem. The biggest problem really was that the holes weren't 100% perfectly aligned with the lower plate. I'm not exactly sure where the deflection came in or if it was that my DRO scales might have skipped a bit. But it added up to be enough that I had to go and recut the lower holes afterwards slightly to align. I should have definitely taken a bit more time and care with this and I also should have skimmed these plates the top and bottoms before I even started machining the features because this plate was actually especially out of true. I think it was about 0.3 millimeters thickness difference from side to side when I started and I didn't check that. So yeah really not ideal but the machine still worked in the end but left on Next time I'll definitely try and do better. So unfortunately there was a slight misalignment between the pins on the top plate and bottom plate. I should have foreseen this and if I did this again in the future I would make the bottom holes undersized and I would size them finer, finish like this. So I've aligned the middle on axis. So what I have to do now is I need to remove the top plate ream the bottom to size that will to a new location and hopefully the pin will line up properly afterwards it's off by about 0.1 a millimeter which is enough to cause problems so. So that's about all we have time for in this video. Um, next time we'll work on the punch pins and all the random finishing bits and bobs and show you a few of the extra tricks I like to do on the machine to make it work. So some fun things that were coming up. Uh, thank you for watching and stay tuned for next time.